Hey everybody, this is Dean from Motion Media, and uh, today we're going to take a look at how to create uh, a rig that would allow you to apply dynamics to a necklace. And we're going to use Mass Effects in Max 2013, which in my opinion is probably one of the uh, better uh, additions to Max in some time, maybe since Cat. It's a fantastic tool and works great. Okay. So we're going to make a box. I um, originally uh, learned how to do this from a tutorial online. Um, if you search for uh, Mass Effects Tutorial Rope, you will find it. And um, I basically uh, took his technique for making a rope and uh, changed that into a necklace and that's what we're going to look at. So I'm um, I'm starting up the same way he did. Uh, I'm just going to show you my units here. Okay. One unit, one inch, fractal inches. Okay. So we're going to make a line. And we're going to use the snap tool here. And make it from one end of the box to the other. Delete the box. Okay, this is going to be our rope or our, in this case, our necklace rope. We turn that off. So we're going to go into um, segment and we're going to divide this, in my case, 56 times. And hit divide. Okay. Now let's talk about what that, why I did that and what that means. Uh, what each vertice is going to represent is an, uh, each end of a bone. So in my case, you know, if you added these all up, there'd be, whatever, 55, 56 pieces inside the necklace that create the chain. And those can be any one of a number of things. They could be pearls, they could be uh, a rope of some kind, linkage, uh, square objects, round objects, doesn't matter. Okay, so we are going to, uh, first, now that we have all our segments, let's turn on our vertice tick so we can see everything. All right. So the next step is to bend this into the shape of a necklace. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go into the sub object of bend and move the center of that pivot to here. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to make it a circle almost closed, not quite, um, because what we're going to do is we're going to put a pendant inside this one and so we want a little break between each end actually let's make that a little bit more something like 350 uh, we're gonna eh, that's too far How about 352 there we go okay all right so that leaves us a little gap so we're gonna connect everything here and then uh, uh, constrain it to a pendant in the center which is basically going to change this from a rope to a closed necklace Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, the bones. And this is going to be a little boring for a second. Now, it's important to think about, uh, before you start this process, what the individual pieces are that are um, in between uh, each bone. And again, we're going to make our the volume of each bone roughly match the volume of uh, each segment in the chain of the necklace. And that's really important because the bones essentially are going to be the ones uh, that are um, getting the physics applied to them. So they're going to be doing the collision detection and what have you. And then you'll ultimately link your high-res objects to these bones individually. Okay, so there's our completed necklace. We don't need this last bone, so we're going to delete it. We're going to hide the shape, and we're going to select all the bones, and then we're going to go to Animation and Bone Tools. <coughs> and, um, you know, for this example, we are going to, um, like I said, make these guys roughly the same size. I'm going to leave just a little bit of gap between each connection there. 
and you can see what we have. Oops. Okay, so that's going to be the bulk of our um, uh, something like that. Okay. All right, so we can close that. And now I'm going to just place in a stand-in object that, again, we would later link whatever the pendant thing is going to be to this. What's crucial in this part of the setup for the rig is pivot points. So, and I'm just being arbitrary about some of this, but um, in terms of the design of it, but I'm going to just kind of match this to what a pendant might be. I'm going to move this up just a little bit. And then, again, we need to move that pivot point to match where this pendant would actually connect to the necklace. And, again, this just is going to be more design-specific. I'm going to actually move this down. And we'll pretend like there's a bit of a, a clasp right in here that the rope is going to go through. Okay, and we'll call this uh, pendant stand-in. And... Um, Ultimately, all of these things, you can turn off their ability to render. Okay, so now we have the uh, basic rig. And uh, now what we need to do is uh, assign everybody's um, uh, status in uh, Mass Effects and then create our constraint system. So, first we will go here, and we will set these as uh, dynamic rigid bodies, and then we'll apply that to everybody. Okay? And uh, now what we're going to do is, starting from the end and working our way backwards, we're going to set up a constraint. In this case, this is the easiest one, I'm going to use the uh, universal constraint. So the first thing that happens, you see when we click it, is we get a little icon. This represents visually um, how that particular uh, joint can move. So I'm going to make it somewhat small. And then the next thing we need to do is define the parent. And then we're going to make the joint free and also free to twist. And you see when we do that, it turns into a sphere you can uh, adjust the size of that icon here. Okay, so we just have to repeat that step uh, quite a number of times to complete this chain. So I'm going to do it a few times and then I'm just going to pause it and finish so otherwise it'll take 30 minutes. So we select the next bone up, constraint, uh, pin the next parent, and make sure the joint is free on all axes, including twist. Okay, next bone, universal constraint, bring it down, define the parent, free up each axis. I'll do this a few times before I pause it here. Select the next bone, constraint, pick the parent, free up the joint. Next bone, universal, define the parent, free up the joint. All right, I'm going to go through and I'm going to pause this, go through, finish this, and then I'll be, come back. Okay, so we're going to do the last few of these together. Um, I guarantee when you're finished with this that uh, you not only will know how to do this, but uh, you will have a pretty mean case of carpal tunnel going because it is repetitive. Okay, so we're going to choose that and make it free. Okay, now we're going to purposely, we're going to make one more here. Oops, excuse me. 
and select this and we're gonna make one more joint and we're gonna pick this guy and then uh, I'm gonna leave it incomplete for just a second and make a show you what happens here so um, at this point we should be able to hit play and see what happens. Hmm. Where'd my uh, did not go out far enough yet? Okay, so you see what happens here is it broke, and it broke because we um, we didn't connect those last two pieces. Okay. So we're going to go back to this bone. We're going to create a constraint. He excuse me, sorry, not there. We're going to go here and create a constraint from here. And it's going to go back to here. And we're going to say free. Looks like I missed one. Looks like I may have missed one there. But no matter, it will still work. Okay, let's hit play. See what it does here. Okay, perfect. Now, I left out uh, one link there. Doesn't matter. Uh, but you can see it totally works rock solid. So let's do this. Uh, let's just show how robust this is here and let's add a few things for it to bounce off of. It's always really cool once you have these rigs set up um, because uh, you know it's basically more or less in real time and uh, it really works. So let's uh <coughs> alright that's all we have to do is add it to it see what happens here alright now what happened there is um, there is uh, there was a little too much force coming down on it there that's why it freaked out just a little bit I don't have the tolerances set really high nor do I have the accuracy set really high so if I move that sphere a little bit closer what's going to happen is uh, it's not going to build up quite as much velocity or momentum oh you know one more thing here let's uh, I gave that the wrong thing let's make this um, kinetic alright okay now you see what it does there? Okay, it still freaks out a little bit, and again, that's just mostly because I um, haven't dialed in a lot of uh, accuracy here. So we'll move it a little closer. Also, I have gravity set really high. We'll do it again. There we go. So it looks really, uh, it looks really awesome here and uh, uh, so if we stop it there actually let's let's just bake it real quick so uh, let's do um, let's do a bake simulation tools and let's just bake all for a second that way we can scrub it a few times and again you can see it's freaking out between some of those joints All right. So we'll just let it go to a hundred here. We can take a closer look at things. <coughs> um, all right. Okay. Now everything's baked in. Now we can scrub this. See what's actually going on. So you can see what's happening there. We are. Uh, uh, you can see right in here some of those joints are getting pulled away and again it's just because our gravity is a little too high and it's not giving the solution time to make a correct calculation there so if we say unbake all we go back here if we reduce this gravity to say five and hit it again 
you can see you can see that the joints hold together uh, much more accurately and it's just because again I don't have all the proper tolerances set up and whatever and I was able to fix that by just adjusting the gravity from a negative 32 feet per second to a negative 5 per second so we will include a link to this finished file as you see it here um, so that you can play with it and use it as reference um, as you try to rebuild. Alright, good luck and we will talk to you soon.